Hey guys, what's up? I'm Ella. And with the rollout of Android 12 and many upcoming Android phones, such as the S22, the Android world is really interesting right now. But is Android 12 now better than iOS 15? And in what ways do they differ? Today, I will take a deep dive through all of the different aspects of the two operating systems and talk about what I like and don't like about each of them. And in the end, I will also share some of my favorite exclusive apps and features for both sides. I will be using my S21 to demo the Android features, but Pretty much all of these features are on the Pixel 6 as well, and so probably on all other Android phones too. Okay, so perhaps the most overlooked difference between iOS and Android is how you navigate them. On the surface, Android 12 and iOS 15 seem to be pretty similar in terms of navigation. You swipe up from the bottom to exit an app, swipe across to quickly change between apps, and the app history tab looks pretty much the same as well. But that's where the similarity ends. When you're inside an app on iOS, you have to obey the app's design. So if an app says you must swipe from the left towards the right to return to the previous page, then that's what you gotta do even if your phone is in danger of falling out of your hands. However, on Android, you have this universal back gesture, which is on both sides of the screen and can be used everywhere on your phone. So anytime you want to return to the previous page, you can just do a quick swipe from either side, no matter what the app's design is. And by the way, if you're on Samsung and still using the default three buttons at the bottom, then I definitely recommend at least giving the gestures a try. I think they're a lot more convenient. So yeah, I definitely prefer the navigation on Android. It allows me to more comfortably use a comparatively larger Android phone with just one hand. And actually for me, the iPhone 13 Pro size is right at the limit of me still being able to reach everywhere on the screen with just one hand. But I feel like I would definitely struggle with the larger iPhone 13 Pro Max. And speaking of one-handed use, so I really prefer the one-hand mode on Samsung specifically because it gives me a smaller version of the entire screen rather than only half of it on iOS. But this isn't a feature on stock Android because as you can see here, the Pixel's one-hand mode is exactly the same as the iPhone's. But for many, navigation is probably not a big factor when choosing a new phone. For a lot of people, probably a big reason to choose the iPhone is the ecosystem. And especially after many months of using this iPhone alongside my MacBook and iPad, I can say that the Apple ecosystem is really good. AirDrop is very convenient, and AirPods auto-switching between devices is super smooth as well. The ability to take calls and respond to messages on my MacBook allows me to put my phone away on silent when I'm working without the fear of missing any calls or texts. I've also been using the new focus modes for controlling my notifications, and they can sync across all Apple devices. But honestly, I don't really use any of the Apple apps, such as Notes, Reminders, Pages, or Safari. I use Chrome instead for better extensions on the desktop. And for Notes and Planning, I use OneNote and Notion because they are packed with way more useful features, and they also sync across all platforms. So for me, there isn't any software feature of the ecosystem that's extremely alluring with no good third-party alternatives. But for someone who uses a lot of those stock Apple apps and perhaps iMessage and FaceTime, then the ecosystem probably plays a stronger reason to get the iPhone. And although a lot less talked about, Android does have a pretty decent ecosystem of its own as well, especially with a Windows computer. For one, the nearby share feature lets you share files between Android phones regardless of the brand. And although it has a less attractive name than AirDrop, it works pretty well. The Your Phone app on Windows also works pretty well with an Android phone. So with this app, you can use the Windows computer to directly make calls, text people. But after giving this a try, I would say it's still way less seamless than Apple's approach. Also, some companies like Samsung can have their own ecosystem features as well, such as the QuickShare and the Samsung Notes app. And those could certainly be useful if you also use a Samsung laptop. But I think Google Assistant is a major win for Android devices. It's compatible with way more smart home devices compared to Siri. And not to mention, the Nest Hub is much more useful than the HomePod because it has a screen which can display a clock, show your schedule, and play YouTube videos with just voice command. But Apple's ecosystem isn't just about software. I think accessories such as the Apple Watch, AirTags, and AirPods play a big role in the ecosystem experience as well, since they are some of the best products in their respective categories. So overall, the Apple ecosystem is is still more seamless and feature rich. 
but depending on what specific features of it you actually use, it might not be as revolutionary as often made out to be. And now let's talk about the looks. So it's definitely much easier and quicker to get a clean and uniform look on Android than on iPhone. You can install a theme with just one click, and typically that will change your wallpaper, lock screen, and accent colors, and all of your app icons will have a uniform design. Android 12 actually introduced an even quicker and more personal way of customization. So after choosing a wallpaper, you can also choose to make the UI elements automatically take on a set of complementary colors, although only the built-in app icons will change colors. But there are many other ways to get custom icons for the other apps. Now on iOS, you can get a clean and uniform look too, but that'll take much more time because you'll have to individually customize each app icon. Not to mention that doing all of that is kind of taking a step back in terms of functionality, since each custom app icon isn't really an app icon, but instead a shortcut. And so tapping on one will trigger the shortcut notification. There was a workaround to hide this, but it no longer works. And lastly, regarding the widgets. I think the interactive widgets on Android are just better. Now, another difference in terms of looks is app organization. So first of all, on the iOS home screen, all of the apps snap to the top left, which is really annoying because that's the hardest part for me to reach with one hand. Of course, this problem can be somewhat alleviated by putting some widgets at the top left, but honestly, I don't understand why arbitrary app placement is still not a feature on iOS. And the rest of the apps are in the app library, which is automatically sorted by category on the iPhone, but isn't on the Android. I do like the sorted look of iOS, but in practice, for the apps that I rarely use, it's typically faster to just search for them, which both phones can do very easily with a quick swipe up. All right, so in the past, iOS notifications attracted a lot of complaints. Since then, they've added a lot more features to try to improve it, but it might be too much. So for each app, there are a lot more notification options on iOS, but I feel like some of them aren't super necessary. Also, iOS doesn't keep your notifications on your lock screen unless you enable the time-sensitive notification option, whereas on Android, the notification will always be there until you clear it. I do like the new scheduled summary on iOS though, but one big plus for Android are the notifications badges at the top. Those also show up on the always on display, which iOS still doesn't have. And those badges are a big reason why overall I prefer Android's notification system. Okay, so Apple always seems to have a heavy emphasis on privacy, but Android 12 actually added a lot of new privacy features as well. For one, now on Android, you can also see a green dot at the top whenever an app is using your camera or microphone, just like on iOS. Both also have a permissions manager where you can control your app's permissions, including whether your location is given as precise or not. But although iOS is often advertised and perceived to be more private, a very recent study shows that apps on both sides track the user equally as often and concluded that there is no clear winner in terms of privacy. I'll have the paper linked down below if you want to learn more about it. So on its own, I think Android is the better operating system for the superior navigation, customizability, and also the notification system. System. However, this isn't necessarily saying that Android phones are better than iPhones, because when you put the operating systems back into their respective environments, then the story becomes a bit more complicated. For one, iOS is part of a much better ecosystem that brings benefits like AirPods, AirDrop, and also the really good Apple Watch. But the new iPhone 13s are really competitive phones as well. They have really strong cameras and very long battery lives. And now to end off the video, I want to talk about some of my favorite exclusive features and apps on iOS and Android. So starting with iOS, inside of the built-in clock app, you can actually set a sleep timer. So just go to the timer and then set whatever time you want and then click on when timer ends. And instead of one of the sounds, scroll all the way down and click on stop playing. And that way, when the timer is up, instead of playing the sound, it will just stop playing whatever your phone is currently playing. If you like to fall asleep, to music or YouTube videos, then this is for you. And the second feature is offloading apps. You can set it so that unused apps are automatically offloaded, but all of your documents and data associated with those apps will still be saved. Another pretty cool feature is drag and drop. You can drag content from one app and drop it into another, which basically replaces the copy and paste action. And now on the Android side, so for those of you who really like your extensions, the Firefox and Kiwi browsers allow 
allows for extensions on Android. And the second thing is launchers, which is a quick way to change the looks and some of the functionalities on Android. So a really popular one is the Nova launcher, but another one that I found that I like is the Niagara launcher. And lastly, on Samsung specifically, there is this kid version, which when you turn it on, basically just turns your phone into a kid friendly phone. And the only way to get out of this is by entering your passcode. So next time you're at a family gathering or something and a small child asks you for your phone, then you can just turn on the kid mode and you'll have peace of mind knowing that they won't see anything they aren't supposed to see. And yeah, so that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and also be sure to subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any of my upcoming videos. And if you would like to, you can follow me on my other social medias. I recently just joined Twitter. And yeah, that's all that I have to say for this video. So I hope to see you in another one of my videos. Bye.